Welcome to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Hey, folks, it's voting time. It's voting time. We're getting at the end of the race. Probably got about 20 more yards to do, okay? <laughs> and, uh, and so bottom line, we're going to start interviewing some issues here on Oregon Voters Digest. And, and joining me in doing that is Richard Carpenter, who is another producer here at PCM, Portland Cable Medium. And again, welcome aboard, okay? Fine. Well, our first candidate that we're going to be introducing today, uh, talking to a gentleman by the name of John Sweeney. You know John. John's been here on the Oregon Voters Digest. In fact, he's got his training boots off on, on this end of the deal. But the bottom line is John is running for state senator here in district number 21. He's a very solid, hard-nosed, working Democrat. And he's been around, Richard. Oh, okay. okay. He's been around. All right. And John's been around. He's got some interesting background. So we'll be real quick. But the thing that stands out most of him is basically Portland Park supervisor. Boy, big time. He's a in his former national, he was a captain in the Oregon Army National Guard. He did go to school. <laughs> he did have a little private, uh, prior, prior government experience. Aspect. Again, he's a, he's a Democrat, Democratic precinct committeeman, so he's very much involved in, in that part of the deal. And anyway, long, 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 and if you want to cite some other things, but, but John, welcome. Okay. Glad to be here. And so, thank you for so, inviting so, me. So, John, what, what <clears throat> Richard and I want to know is that what do you feel is mo your most important issue as it relates to the area that you're running from, and also the the solution to that to that particular interest. Uh, uh, okay. Well, uh, when you see my uh, voters pamphlet, you'll see it has a little uh, blurb on uh, education, environment, and emergency clauses. But for those of you who, saw, who read the uh, Morning Oregonian, you'll see that it's, uh, the Democrats are um, really ramping up on gun control, mm -hmm. and the trouble is. The gun control laws only affect law-abiding citizens. In fact, the gun control pro promoters actually do not want gun control laws that work. Uh, there's a gun con uh, control uh, form called uh, multiple purchase form. See, because uh, Sammy so-and-so can't buy a firearm, so he sends uh, sweet Susie down to get him, and so she buys more than one firearm, and, uh, and she has to fill out a multiple purchase form. Well, what happens is, uh, and all the police, from, from the, the local police to the federal and everybody in between, when they find a, a firearm at a uh, crime scene, first thing to do is they check the multiple purchase form. And guess what? Susie Sweetie, uh, we found this firearm at a crime scene and somebody's murdered. Why, you must be the murderer. Oh, no, I got it from Sammy so-and-so. Got it for Sammy so-and-so. Then they go back and they catch Sa Sammy so-and-so. Well, the that's the one law that really works and the gun control people they want to have one gun a month or one gun a year and that does that neutralizes that one gun law that does work now they are following the uh, Adolf Hitler's Mein Kampf thing of uh, lie keep lying and when in doubt lie again like uh, uh, internet sales of firearms you know that firearm doesn't come straight to you it goes to a local dealer and you they do a background check they keep talking about the gun show loophole, and the deal is in Oregon. Uh, Jenny Burdick introduced it, and she gets out uh, that's and talks Senator, about Senator, 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 Senator Burdick. That's, a, that's an adjoining district, isn't it? Your I believe so, over yeah. on the west side. Sure. Yeah. And yeah. Any, anyway, what happens is, uh, yeah. so you go to a gun show or any place that has more than 25 firearms for sale, they have to do a background check. Now, the thing is, they just passed Senate Bill uh, 941, and that's where everybody does a background check. So other than uh, selling or giving to a family member, if it's your neighbor, you have to go with your neighbor and the firearm down to the uh, uh, local gun shop that will do a background check for you. Now, on the 13th of March at uh, Broadway Grill, there's uh, a meeting, uh, uh, Lou Fred Representative Lou Frederick's uh, monthly meeting, he says, you know, you know, Lou, Senate Bill 941 isn't going to do anything to fight crime. And his reply was, that's not the, not the, the intent of the, the bill. The intent of the bill basically is to give people a shaft, you know, and the thing is that... Give, give the what now again? Shaft. The shaft. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now, are you building something or whatever? What's the deal? <laughs> John. They, they, basically, they, they have this concerted effort to make it inconvenient to uh, own a firearm mm. and... and Gun control is not about guns. Gun control is about control. Yeah. And you look at it, it's about control. Because the only people that 
that follow that as law-abiding citizens. And in fact, there's a uh, significant uh, thing called uh, hot burglaries. And hot burglaries means the people are home. And you go to the places where the restrictions are high on firearms, like Chicago and New York City and mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., 43% of the time, the people are there. Mm -hmm. Now you go to less restrictive place, like most places in the West, it's only about 13% of the time. And I've had friends who were home when people broke into their home. And one fellow, uh, he's no longer with us, and he was down around uh, uh, Oak Grove or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he was uh, in a wheelchair and all that, so he became an attractive target. And he actually had to shoot people on three different occasions. And then his oh. wife died, and then oh, he, wow. he moved wow. with his son wow. to mm -hmm. Idaho. Mm -hmm. So that is the thing. And the thing that's going to... Um, now, you're talking about the bill now, right? Did you? Yeah, but anyway, Senate Bill 941 is not, was not intended to fight, front, fight crime. So the deal is it's not intended to do anything for you and I as citizens. And so the thing is that they've they're got all this push to uh, just make it real inconvenient for, for you and I to have firearms. Well, tell me this. The, the, he's still Representative Lou Frederick, right? He's, yeah. I think he's running for the Senate. Yes. Okay, uh, here in, in Northeast Portland aspect of it. But uh, did he give you the opportunity to articulate yourself like you're articulating here now with us? It was just... In, in the Democratic Party piece, right? No, that's aren't just... They very, aren't they very nice and open about the process? Uh, that's what I was always told. I thought the Republicans had that problem. No, the deal is that the... the the really left Democrats, the deal is you can speak your piece if you agree with them, see? Oh, yeah. Uh, so the deal is right. a lot of times I don't agree with them. And, oh. and one of the things is... So uh, is Lou Frederick, a, a represent, Representative Lou Frederick? That's right. A left... Uh, uh, what's oh, that? Yeah. He's, he's in the clique. And a nine, in the clique. Yeah, oh, Senate okay. Bill 941. He's running for office too, folks. Yeah. He's running for Senate, right? Yeah. And uh, Senate Bill 941, all Democrats voted for it except Betsy Johnson out in... Uh, Scapoos, oh. he's really a nice gal. See. And but she's a and she's a, a Democrat. A Democrat, yes. Okay. So he's on party lines. Very progressive. Yeah, and so, but this is all to uh, for control. And look at the other things about control. Look at uh, making it inconvenient to own an automobile. On top of it, Williams Avenue and a lot of it isn't two lanes; it's one. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the Southeast Division isn't four lanes; it's two. They want to do that to Northeast and Southeast 82nd. They want to do it to uh, Foster. And look at all these bioswales they're having in the traffic, eliminating parking spots. They could just as well have that uh, bioswale between the curb and the sidewalk. They'd get their bioswale, but they'd still have the parking. And that's making it real inconvenient. So what about, uh, so right. who's, who's supporting it? Are the Democrats in that same clique? Oh, yeah. city, city Hall, what they do, need to do in the City Hall is is change it so that they put the bioswales between the sidewalk and the, and the curb so you still have the parking. Oh, okay. And it's really hurting a lot of businesses. The people on, on Foster who are their, uh, next on the yes. barrel to have it happen, That's right. a lot of businesses are really worried. You know, It's tough enough to be in business uh, when things are going well. You exactly. know, you're a businessman. Yeah. You know oh, very much so, very much so. so. And I agree with that position. Yeah. And we'll make sure we make that change. You might repeal that law. Yeah. Okay. And the other, <laughs> other part of that is look at the apartments they're allowing them to build. 40 to 100 units, no parking. That's and inexcusable. You're, yeah. And you're hearing all over that people can't park in front of their house. The deal is you park your car and when you you go home, you're going to have to write, well, where did I park my my car so you can find it in the morning? Well, John, tell me something. Now. And Rich, you got to jump on in on this piece here. Tell me something. I mean, you're talking, to, I mean, really, you're talking serious <laughs> situation that we're having here mm -hmm. within this area parking situation we got the bicyclists just, just right. doing anything they want to do they don't pay any taxes for all that repair stuff that we have to do right whatever but my point is that what about the Democratic Party aspect are they supporting all this stuff that that, that same group if you will of control there the um, Democratic P Party of Oregon has a gun owners caucus and so we there's a, a bunch of us usually from outside the metropolitan area, but there are these some, are Democrats. Some these are all Democrats. Democrats, yeah. And who are telling them, no, this is not good, this is not good. And but then they're, they're just uh, they well we slow them up a little bit. You see? slow them up, but they're still going that way. But it's Democrats. Yeah. Democrats, really We're Democrats. You really pushing Democrats. for it. Trying and to educate them. Are you telling them the same thing about those apartments and all the parking lane, all that good stuff? All that stuff. And the thing is the um, 
a lot of times they, the police catch some of these people who are felons with a firearm. Right. They got them in the back of the police car right. and they let them go. You know, in the jurisdictions that catch these. Not Portland police. I believe they do. I'm but Portland sure. police do it. Yeah, but if they prosecute those people, where they're going to get five to ten years, right. then the uh, bad people they don't want to touch the firearms, and that's what gets the crime down. And the real answer to uh, deterrent, to the, so to, to speak. Yeah. The, the real deterrent is uh, when I was on the Multnomah Education Service District Board. They had law-related education, and so these kids at the sixth grade, you know, where they're old enough to kind of realize what's going on, they're uh, <coughs> they're there to see what the, the court system does and all that. And in fact, um, one of the guys that was in charge of it, he says, you know, there was one of the kids come and talk to us. He says, had a neighbor that would go on business trips ever so often. Well, when she was on this thing and had a tour of the courthouse, here he was in the jumper suit. The deal is he wasn't going on a business trip. He was going to jail for 60 or 90 days, mm -hmm. and that's oh. what he did. But they were <coughs> the neighbors they were telling the neighbors, oh, yeah. oh he's on a business trip. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh okay. That's, that's the norm. <laughs> that's the norm, John. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So anyway, but the thing is, and in prison reform, see, they're trying to put about 20 gallons of water into a five-gallon bucket. What they need to do is you go to a seniority force out. You know, no parole board. When somebody is supposed to go in, you know, they're convicted, they go in, whoever's been there the longest goes out the other side. Mm. Because mm. it's not the, severity of, not the severity of the punishment, it is the swiftness and sureness. And mm. look at some of these young people uh, who get into it and they get their, their wrists slapped several times. You know, by the time they do any time, they've got a real laundry list. Mm -hmm. You know, so they really look real bad. Well, the deal is the people who get some sanctions, serious sanctions, most of them never get in trouble again. So they, there's an, the, uh, they've had enough. You know, they've, they've either did, did community service or they've, they paid a big fine or they, they um, did some jail time. And um, so that is the thing is the swiftest and, and sureness. Then the other thing to have justice on that is the fact that you have an expungement. You know, you're clear so long, that goes away. And then when they, they get out and you talk to them, it says, look, you go straight for three years, this goes away. And the deal is because if they have this thing that, that uh, mark against them forever, it's really horrible. Because it's a problem. Yeah, because yeah. you look at say young man or young woman in their late late teens, early twenties, make a mistake, and say they're clear at at uh, twenty five. Well, you know, fifteen years later, they're forty. You know, they've got a job, they got married, and things are going along. They get pulled over by a policeman and. Next thing you know, he checks. Oh, a felon. Well, next thing you know, they're they're on the ground at gunpoint. And back in the system. Up. Again. Back in the system. Oh. Criminal justice system. Because that is the thing about the criminal justice system. It needs an overhaul, and 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 that would be curing part of the crime thing. Okay. The fact that, and you get back to the thing is that uh, it's it's a swiftness and sureness. Mm -hmm. Now I let lost. Me just, let me, let me why why in would in why, why would they put them down on the ground to check them out? If there wasn't an outstanding warrant against them, because that's that's their training nowadays. The deal is oh. they went because it used to be they were a peace officer, you know, to keep things calm. Now the deal is, if you're the accused for some reason, it's like being in a football game and you got the ball and they want to pig pile you. It's just the way they're trained now, you oh, know. It's, okay. So that's in, in well, you know, we, we have had this issue of profiling too. <coughs> yeah, in, I, in, I guess in, that in, in is correct. In that aspect of it, and, and yeah. African Americans kind of play a lot of role because a lot of the majority of those folks that are pulled off from the stats, statistics, were, okay. were, were black. You see what I'm saying? Now, in and, fact, and the deal on that, uh, the uh, High Country News just had an article, and I give you one talk death by cop, mm -hmm. and they had uh, these statistics from year 2000 to uh, 2015 and uh, what, the, what the rate of uh, kill was and for Oregon was, was 15 per million. Mm -hmm. Now Oregon in, in um, 2000 was about a three and a half million. Now in October it hit four million. So the deal is that uh, 51 per million that makes it, the, makes it between 150 and 200 people were killed by the police in wow. 15 years. Wow. Any, any stats mm -hmm. here in the Portland area? Uh, some of them, I'm sure, is important. Probably majority, probably majority of that stat. I'm just saying. Probably yes, you okay. know, because it's it's uh, you have more people, you have more incidents, and and the fact that you have a large segment of the population that's unemployed, you know, mm -hmm. and um, 
the uh, I remember when I worked for American Oil in '63, the, the economy got a little bad, and he says, you know, small businesses, including service stations, that's when people get desperate, mm -hmm. and they have have the robberies. You know, they uh, they get laid off, and they use up their unemployment mm -hmm. in six months. You know, and then they they get desperate. You know, they had a time when they had that extended unemployment was actually uh, safety insurance basically for the people because mm -hmm. these people still had some money. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're on unemployment, you have some money coming in. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's right. if you're out of work and out of money, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get desperate. You know? Well, tell me something uh, along that particular line. And I'm not trying to play partisan politics. In fact, you know, when one's running for office, it's unfortunate we, got, we have two different major entities, one Republican Party, one Democratic Party aspect of mm -hmm. it. But <laughs> if the city of Portland is predominantly, the majority, are Democrats, and we talk the kind of issues that we're talking about. A lot of times, Republicans get blamed for it. So you understand what I'm saying? Oh, so, yeah. so a lot of times, politicians bring that to the table as opposed to just talking to the issue. What I'm hearing you saying is that they are very much aware of these issues, mm -hmm. but for some strange reason, they're not just voting just from from sense of what what is fair and what is right. Fair? Well, a lot of it's the uh, what's the deal? A lot of it is the agenda agenda 21 pushed from. Uh, from the United Nations on down, and just and it's easier to uh, get the restrictions in in uh, big cities where the press could lie to them all the time, hmm. and, and so it's just yeah. But there's a big call for state rights, you know what I mean? And what what happened to that? I mean, I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, you got Betsy Johnson, like I say, in the Salem area aspect of it, is voting on the kind of things that you're talking about. What's right for Oregon, kind of a deal. Hmm. And here we are sitting. I mean, we got the some of the sort of problem, and we got state rights here. And this, you know, why, why is it that this, this business of, quote, not responding to the issues that you're talking about well, here in this city? It's, it's the population and closed in and, and the lies. And, and I talked to a lot of my <clears throat> relatives, you know, about, about the real issues about firearms. You know, they're all excited about the so-called assault uh, weapons. And they're really just military lookalikes, modern sporting rifles. Well, who blames this? I mean, are there all Republicans that have these assault weapons, or is it? No, well, <laughs> I, mean, I, hate put it, I hate to be playing that, that Republican-Democrat thing, but man, I tell you, it, it, it gets it hard. You know, I happen to be a, a Lincoln Republican to a certain degree, but I mean, I, Richard, we're kind of in the same boat, no. but we're not into that this, this negative thing, right? Hmm. No, well, the thing is, it's, it's a matter of, of uh, they have their agenda, and their agenda is to disarm this country and they you also hear them pushing for the constitutional convention or the convention of states mm -hmm. and the, they're saying they're writing rules to protect to uh, control it and some people are, are Republicans pushing for this oh yeah oh yeah this and it's really me. bad because if they have that uh, convention and the gavel goes down they say this is in session one person jumps up and says I move to suspend the rules the second one says says uh, second and the third one says a call for the question our rights could be gone within hours wow. and wow. the deal is and it isn't just the uh, the firearms look at the freedom uh, uh, you know freedom of speech you know the deal is foreign countries you know the reporters uh, they don't reveal their uh, sources they go to prison hmm. here they have some protection so hmm. it protecting our rights you know the the Bill of Rights um, is well, really, I'm hearing you, really John, but I'm still, again, I'm, I'm, when we started this conversation, the idea is that you're going to identify the issue, if you will, mm -hmm. that, that's, that's representative of the area that you're re re running for. And you, you say this bill was being introduced, if you will, yeah, that in all due respect that you, tend, you, you did not agree with, right? Yeah. Okay. So the idea is, how are you going to change that? Well, one of the things is that we can... <coughs> we can how are you going to change it? Yeah. Well, you have laws in it to change a thing. Uh, the criminal justice thing is the fact that you're going to go to a seniority force out because the things, a lot of times the judge says, oh, there's no room in the end. Well, we're going to change it so there is room. You know, building more and more prisons is not, is not the answer because uh, now in the military, I was in ordinance, which uh, had a lot of complicated stuff, and some of the most expensive places to build and operate is a prison. And the thing is we're not getting our money with, worth, and you're paying people you know, almost 100000 a year for a couple of meetings a month. And they keep people they should let out, and they let out people they should uh, should keep. Yeah. So the thing is, is you go to a seniority force out, you tell them, look, you you be a good boy or a good girl, and here your deal is this process, you'll be out. You cause trouble and you go in solitary, you'll lose your, your turn on the ladder, see? So the thing is that when they're in, it'll be in their best, best interest. 
And then the thing is, is to have jobs, you know. Uh, well, I, look, I, I'm not trying to cut you off, but I'm still trying to deal with your issue. You know, okay. the issue that you came up with, the table aspect of it. How are you going to convince the voters in your area to vote for you with this situation on the table? Well, one is telling them the truth, because a lot of them don't okay. know. They're listening to the, the lies from the press. This is, no, this is what, how it is. In fact, uh, in the 89 session of the legislature, the, um, they changed the Oregon Concealed Handgun Law from being May issue, and Multnomah County only had 13 or 15 permits, and you had to be somebody to get one, to a shall issue. And now um, uh, I think there's a, uh, over 150,000 of them, and nationwide, it, where the concealed handgun license are, one out of four or, or one out of three belongs to a woman. So yeah. yeah, but John, but still I'm going back. But, it's, but the majority of your party mm -hmm. is saying they don't agree with you. And you gotta, you got to get your constituents within your area to vote for you. How are you going to change the, the situation well, okay. one, with one, that coming to the table? <laughs> all right. Well, one of, the, one of the things is is that the, my opponent, who's a state representative who wants to move up. They're the incumbent, right? Who is no, that? she's not an incumbent. Uh, there was a little sleight of hand here, see? Okay. okay. And, okay. and uh, Diane Rosenbaum didn't tell anybody she was going to leave and, and didn't file for re-election. And so the representative in, in District 41 was going to slip in without a battle, see? And uh. this, this has been kind of the slime slot here Yee. in mm. here where, because... Must be a Republic. Was that a Republican? No, they're all Democrats. Oh, oh yeah. I didn't know. Did you imagine that? Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Shirley Gold was my representative. Okay. Then she, I don't know who, then she moved to Senator and, and Kate Brown slipped in on an unannounced thing. Yeah. And then... Um, no, she's Shirley, governor. She's not running. Uh, no, no, no. Shirley Gold <laughs> retired, and Kate Brown moved up to senator. See, oh. and Diane Rosenbaum slipped in. See? Okay, all this oh. unannounced stuff. Oh, and see, and so. Oh, I'd say now that should that should be your platform, John. Well, I'll be telling people <laughs> about it. So and <clears throat> and so the deal is that um, uh, then, of course, Kate Brown run for uh, governor, and and Diane Rosenbaum moved up, and and uh, that type of thing, and. My opponent, uh, her uncle is uh, Peter Courtney, president oh, of the Senate. Really? Yeah. Wow. So it's kind of like a, a legislative incest. Oh, all where, where all does, in the family. Yeah. Where, where, where do you fit, John? I mean, aren't you part? Weren't you at the table when they were doing all that switching and going on? No. The deal is that you know, I imagine uh, on the afternoon of uh, <laughs> March March eighth, the deal is there's price and. There's a flying ointment, that big so and so from Portland. <laughs> yeah, is that right? <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just kind of guessing. You the that. guy. Okay. Uh, the, oh, they're talking the, about you. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Well, you know, John, in all due respect, um, you know, the, the gun issue is a very serious issue. Yeah. And you know, and for what you're sharing with us, in all due respect, we're not taking it serious. You know, people, it, it is a serious issue. Yeah, and, that's and right. And the idea is that, uh, and people are very concerned with that. But they're making it such an R and a D thing, like the Republicans are at fault about this whole, I'm talking about in our city, yeah. here in, the, in Portland. Yeah. But yet and still, uh, <laughs> you hear this stuff I, going on. I Richard? have the impression you're for guns and doing the right thing with them. Yeah. For, for the, let's say, civilized citizen. How about right. that? Right, uh, right. And uh, everyone else wants to take them away from everybody. Mostly they'd be taking them away from the criminals. Uh, that's, that's what they're saying they're doing, but that's not what's going to happen. Yeah, they're playing and politics right, with it. They're right. playing because politics with it. You, you arrest somebody and they have a laundry list, and then they plea bargain out, and usually the gun charges are the first things they, they drop. Wow. Oh, wow. So the thing is that you, the laws are on the books, mm -hmm. and they're not enforcing them. That's what the NRA and, and all of them have said, is enforce the laws that are there. Because the thing that's is right. that in the places where they do enforce the law, the... the um, the felons who don't want to go to jail anymore, they don't mess with firearms because the deal is they know if they're caught, then, the de then they, they go back to prison. Of course, then you got to worry about unscrupulous cop that will plant one on them. So, so, yeah, you, know, that's so, right. so, so you know, Rich, when I think about, again, like I said, the discussion we're having here with John, you know, this gun thing is a serious issue. Yeah. That's right. You know, when, yeah. one, when one has some and then shoots somebody, whether it be 
whatever, 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 domestic or whatever, it is a serious issue. And we That's need to right. have a discussion on this issue. And how can you have a discussion to the issue if, in fact, what John is saying, uh, everybody's playing politics and making sure that they stay in control. Hmm. Fair? Right. Got me? Stay in control. So we never talk to the issue. Because there are some concerns I have with, in all due respect, with guns. But the bottom line is that when, when can you talk about them? Well, actually, if you look at a lot of things, <laughs> there's a lot of serious things that need to be handled, say, in the state legislature. Right. Okay. So, and they'll, uh, luckily in the state legislature, if you have a bill there, the amendments have to be germane to the bill. Mm -hmm. But in the federal Congress, they don't. You know, you got something you, you've seen there, oh, this is really good. Then they, they tag on what I call the dirty skirt legislation. Someone or some ones will tag on abortion or gun control, right. see? And next thing you know, that bill that was going to be good for you and I goes away. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that a lot of times they're, they're putting uh, abortion on the, uh, the table or gun control on the table as a diversion because they know the people are going to be fighting over those mm -hmm. and some things that they should be doing for us mm -hmm. just go away mm -hmm. and that we've been cheated time after time mm -hmm. and and I'd like to uh, kind of raise a stink okay. over it and some of these things say like like Senate Bill uh, 941 if it was going to fly was um, the fact that it go before the voters so they have a chance to look at it in, in broad daylight mm -hmm. but th that would be uh, the thing to do and okay. the, the original bill was going to have it if you and I was going to go out to the range to go shooting and you was going to borrow one of my firearms mm -hmm. I'd have to run a background check on you. See? Yeah. Oh. See, that, that's how far they wanted to go. Well yeah. the thing is so we got the the uh, <coughs> Oregon Fe Firearms Federation and the National Rifle Association and the couple other organizations they knocked it down so the deal is between family members you could uh, give or sell or in the fact that you can go out with a friend and they can hunt with your firearm or they can shoot your firearm mm -hmm. for fun. So, mm, interesting. But so mm. it, the thing is they're really extreme about it and it's all about control. Okay, I got you. All about yeah. control. Uh, all about control. There's, there's and there's a lot to do yeah, with that. That's really what the yeah. problem is. Yeah, the, the so, we can, so the idea is that we can't talk about the whole issue of guns. That's what, that's what, that's what I'm hearing. But the thing is, so is we got some issues we need to talk about. Uh, and we need to you emphasize it's about control. Okay. And there's other things that they're trying to control you with. The apartments with no parking, uh, less uh, lanes on the streets, and less places to park on the streets. And uh, some of these places, you know, uh, I imagine on Foster and 82nd, those small businesses are going oh, yeah. to go out of business. Oh, yeah, very tough. Right? Well, I'll do speak about anything. There, there's there. at least one lady down somewhere in the city that said, Everybody should be on a bicycle. Mm -hmm. right. I said, no, that doesn't yeah, work that way. Sometimes it gets cold and red. Yeah. And like, like you and I, we, we need tricycles. <laughs> uh, are the lanes wide enough for us to get down there? I don't think so, do you? That's right. I mean, how do you pass somebody with a tricycle? Well, you know, <laughs> the, the, they're saying like, like poor people, you know, they use public transportation. You know, a lot of poor people, deal with, they have jobs at places and times that are not served by public transportation. Right. So what are they supposed to do? Walk in the dark and mm -hmm. ride a bicycle mm -hmm. in the dark? That's a problem. And unfortunately, they wear dark clothes, you know? Really bad. And the other, other thing That's a major issue, by the way. We, we're yeah. going to talk about that. We're oh, going to be talking okay. about that. Okay. We're gonna, yeah. That's going to be on the table. Yeah. That's I would suggest it. Why not throw it on the table, you know? Because now, you know, now they're getting ready to, you know, we're concerned now about the potholes, you know, and the sidewalks and whatever. Yeah. And the other thing is when they have the uh, high restrictions on firearms, the deal is uh, knife attacks go up. And you know, you, somebody's coming out of prison, their thing for a knife attack is multiple jabs. Yeah. And in fact, uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island, they had a bill, you committed a crime with a firearm, you got five years. Well, firearms assaults went down, overall assaults went up. Firearms homicides went down, overall homicides went up. You know, and, uh, and the Gun Owners Caucus, I mentioned to the guy, says, you know, we need to tell people that firearms are really not a good murder weapon. I thought the guy, the guy who was leading the group was going to have a cow, yeah. Well, you know, you know, John, in all due respect, again, like I said, you wanted to talk about the whole issue of my own aspect of it. Now we've got to, because this issue of, uh, of homelessness aspect of it. That's there's right. been a lot of shootings in here in the city of Portland. Mm -hmm. Just recently. And, and just recently, and the summer's coming around, the weather's <coughs> getting better. So guess what? There's going to be a lot of pot on the street, mm -hmm. a lot of other stuff on the street, mm -hmm. and people get upset, and this, that, and the other. 
and uh, we're gonna have a, we got a problem. So the idea yeah. is how do we address that? And so my point is that, you know, if, if in fact you guys have the controlling element as far as Democrats are concerned, mm -hmm. they need to seriously start thinking about those things. And maybe that should be some of the things you need to bring to the table and let uh, Mr. Frederick, who is a representative, I guess he's gonna be moving up to the Senate to let him understand, or better yet, why don't you invite him over? We'd like to invite him over here with the Oregon Voters Digest. I mean, Rich and I would love to ask him some okay. questions, right? All with right. you here, because it'd be better to have him there and you there, and, and we can maybe discuss this issue, right? Because sure. it's not Democrats or Republicans, you know, it's life. Yeah. It's life and it's, mm -hmm. it's a nonpartisan issue. Mm -hmm. We've got to take care of it. Fair? Yeah. Okay, good. So that looks good. Now let's see if we can have, um, we, I think we've got Sharon Nash is going to be coming on. She's not here yet. So we'll just kind of talk in general about some of the other issues that we're, what, what do you think about the whole issue of homelessness? Do you have homeless issues in your particular district, uh, senatorial district? There's some around and they, they kind of come and go. And um, so, and you know, the real objection to the, a lot of the homeless there is that they're so messy. That's so right. Messy. They messy. leave messes okay. I can't it's, believe. It's the trash, yeah. And the, uh, the, the thing that they need to do is, is pick a spot where they, have a garbage disposal, mm -hmm. you know, a, a can. They mm -hmm. need to have have re restrooms, you know, chemical toilets. Right. Right. They need to have a, a a place where they would have a, a place where they can take a shower, a place where they can wash their clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, they can mm -hmm. get a washer dryer like for the uh, mobile homes and stuff. Mm -hmm. The thing is, you put your clothes in there, it washes it and dries right. it, right. so that they could be clean, mm -hmm. have an address, so that, and they can get work. And you know, they talk about their weapons and stuff like that. You know. What, what about what about the neighborhood association in your area? How many do you have in your area? Uh, I'm in the Richmond neighborhood. Richmond area. neighborhood association. Yeah. Oh. Are they having that discussion? I believe they are. They are talking about yeah. this stuff. Have you visited them on there? What about gun control and stuff of that nature? Are they talking about that issue? Uh, I talked to one of the neighbors that goes to and he says he hadn't, hadn't not recently. But, but the issue that you are talking to, uh, have you addressed that with the neighborhood association in terms of? Hey, here's my, here's the. This is what what I'm what's being proposed, and this is why I'm against it. And and what do they think of it? Did you have the opportunity to educate them? Because you are a neighbor, right? You you're yeah. part of that, that association, and that would give you more time, if you will, to really get your point across. Yeah, it would. Yeah. And you can talk about that other slime that you've been sharing with yeah, us. Yeah, right. You know, and then the, I bet, I wonder if they know that. You know what I mean? Probably we got, not. Huh? Probably not. You know, the, a lot of people when I bring up some issues, they says, well. I don't know about this or that, and I says, "Well, the only perfect candidate's you. You want to run for office?" <laughs> they don't want to run. Oh yeah. In fact, sometimes if I got one of my flyers in my hand, yeah. it says, "You're a registered voter." Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you know, you know that that is interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, uh, even myself when I walk down the street, you know, and I went to, in fact, I went to this one restaurant and. I said, hey, look, I'd like to shake the hands of the, of the folks that are sitting here. Just let them know who I am or whatever. You know what the guy said to me? He said, oh, no, we're a nonprofit. <laughs> I, I said, well, fine, and the lunch's on you. <laughs> okay. But, so we laughed, and I, I had to go, naturally. I couldn't say anything. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which is very interesting. Well, you know, they, they talk this about... This anti-vote uh, thing. Yeah, the, you know, the, about uh, voter registration and all that. And the deal is, I registered to vote three days after my 21st birthday, because that was the law at the time. Right. And every time I moved, I changed my registration. It was just as important to me as when I moved my stuff. Yeah. Your address. Is, yeah, and so the thing is, you know, <coughs> you kind of wonder about uninformed <coughs> voters and they want to go vote the party line, you know. Yeah. Um, the Democratic Party has really been subverted. So. Well, in all due respect, it, it's across the board as a result of that. Be, you know, from the standpoint that we don't teach it in civics anymore like we used to. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I was. That's the way I was brought up. It was taught in schools. We, yeah. we don't. We don't teach that kind of stuff in school. In, in, in Are not what's that, going on now. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like getting the voter's pamphlet, or if you will, or how to vote, and this, that, and the other, and having a that's class right. on it should be done now. That's while right. the ballots are coming out and get those young people involved because the they're the future. Let the kids vote on, yeah, on the, yeah. imitation ballots. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. And vote on some folks on the they're, front part of it. You know, they used to do that when I was in grade school, but we were talking a long time ago. Gee, well, John, mm -hmm. maybe that might be a bill you may want to introduce yeah. <laughs> to get that in the classroom because we do have issues here in the port. Like you said, all the issues that you just kind of cited, mm -hmm. all this stuff about light lanes and high rise and all this, that, and the other. Yeah, the those are problems. Is, is the people who are running for office, in most cases, it's all special interests. Yeah. You know, everybody got their own little special interests, and we don't say nothing until after the fact, right? Right, right. <laughs> and I, that's too late. In, in regard to that Foster Street thing, I didn't like it when I heard this. The city is not going to change their mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought, well, what, if, what if the people want exactly, something different? Exactly. 
like the businesses over there, how many jobs are going to be gone? The poor guy's going to have to close his business, yeah. right? And he, he loses his employment aspect of it. And the poor people who are buying stuff from him, got me, all of a sudden going to have to go to another area where it's going to cost it much more, if you will. So is there some problems here that, again, like you, at least you're, you're running for office. You get my point? You want, you want to lay it out on the line, but you can't be heard. Yeah. They, they've cut down those four-lane streets too much. It's, it's, they've it's overdone right. it. It's ridiculous. That's why they should leave Foster alone. Maybe improve it some way, but leave it at four lanes. Well, we're going to have some folks that can come down here, and we're going to talk about that issue. I know okay. one guy that's going to really talk about the issue at one point in time. What? Me. Is he a me. Owner? Oh, me. <laughs> me. Okay. Me. Okay. All right. So anyway, look like, is, is Sharon Nassett back in the room there? Is she there she, or is she still talking? <laughs> if she's still talking, we're just going to continue on with John and let him continue on. You know, you, you brought up a good issue that I think we want to we wanna just spend a little bit more time to educate the voters. Yes. That I issue when you was talking about how people were just basically held the power, if you will, of the vote and the control. Mm -hmm. About all this switching and how they switch and, and name some people, you know what I'm saying? That kind of deal. How do we break that kind and of thing? And how do they do it? Yeah, how, how do they do that? You, you kind of, go back over that again. I, I, I want to know. And they you named just, some pretty they, interesting people. Yeah. They're just real quiet about it and, and on what's uh, uh, the fact that they didn't make any announcement and they just slipped. And, and there was a, the filing day. I thought about running against Amanda Fritz. but So I went down there and I says, well, do I run against uh, Rob Nosh in uh, House District 42 or do, do I go for... Uh, Senate District 21. Mm -hmm. So I thought it over. So I decided I'd sign up for Senate District uh, 21. And mm -hmm. uh, and I was talking to one of, the, one of the old guys there. You know how they have that inside information. He says, "Well, I heard this, that, oh. and the other thing." So Sharon's in the house, John. Oh yeah. Okay, why don't you slip out that way on that oh. end of it? And okay. Sharon, come right on in here. Sharon, come on in here. Got it. Got she, it. She's been she's been involved in this stuff for so long. I, I, I'm sure I'm sure glad you were here to kind of uh, you know talk with us a little bit more because Sharon's going to take the house. You know what I'm saying? She's going to take the house. Here, take this little cup with you, John. No, no, don't, don't go, go, go back around this way. Go, go that way, buddy. Go to, come, out, come out this way, Sharon. As long as you've been around here, buddy, you know, you, you, you've been in this office for many times. <laughs> now, you're talking about an activist. You're talking about somebody that's community related. You're talking about somebody that really gets out. In fact, she started me out well, on the venture. We got to <laughs> <laughs> well, figure out how to put that on. Yeah, just put oh, that okay, on there. Just, yeah, just put that on there. Sharon, how you doing? You looking well? Oh, well, thank you. I yes, mean, last I, week I, when you I, talked I, to me, I yeah. couldn't even speak at I all. I know that. I know that. But hey, but knowing you, I know you're going to get on the trail. You're not <laughs> running. You, you're running. Something that we've been talking about for a long time. A long and time. He's got she's signed. She's ready to go, boy. I'm yeah. excited. Oh, I've got a sign. I'm I have excited. To, I have to have them bring it in. You got to bring, bring it in. Bring it in. Go get that. It's yeah, in the car. Tell them to go get that sign before we get that. You got to have that on there so you can blast that out to folks. Yeah, there you go. I mean, really, folks, if anybody is is someone that really, really gets involved in their community, not, not only from the respective area that she's living in, but statewide, statewide nationwide, the whole nine yard. And I'll, I'll give you something that is of, of good remembrance, if you will, and that is the CRC, Columbia oh, River yeah. Crossing. Columbia River I Crossing. tell you, that was something, and I gotta give kudos to, to Sharon uh, on, in that piece because uh, had it not been for this little grouping thing that we did, you remember that? Mm -hmm. With Tiffany and this, that, and the other. No one oh, was, talk no one Tiffany was talking about this stuff, you know what I mean? And we finally got to those consultants, right? You uh -huh. got me? After $160 million. Uh, 210. 210. $210 million. It's and they finally average. figured out that, in fact, they, didn't, they had no intention of building anything. I don't think so. <laughs> you understand Not what at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but yet and still, Sharon was there. She stayed with that deal. And then there's a... Uh, uh, was it, uh, there was another commissioner on the other side uh, before? Uh, 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 his name is Commissioner David Medora. Medora. Mm -hmm. Medora stayed on top of this deal. In fact, he picked up the tab for uh, Tiffany. Remember mm -hmm. that? He did pick up he, the he tab He picked as up the tab citizen. as a private citizen from, from the state of Washington mm -hmm. in Vancouver, Washington. We got to take our hat off, hat off to him. But the fact of the matter is, I want you to know, here's a lady, and I'm, I'm, I, I keep saying it over and over and over, but, you know, somebody that's, uh, you know, I've been running, but bring it, bring it, bring it on in here. Bring it on. Just give it to Sharon. We'll, we'll oh, get, hey, get, uh, give it go. to me. Cause she gonna, yeah, that's right. She's going to be doing the talking. Yeah, there you go. She's going to be, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Let's see if I'll we can let Sharon, place. Yeah, bring it over. Give it to me. I, I'll you do it every, do I'll do it every so there. often. Depending upon the, what you say, I might throw it up there again. See, I like yeah. it, boy. Isn't I'll that tell beautiful? You. Oh, that's yeah. a beautiful green. piece. Nice That's a beautiful piece. You got it. You got it. There it is right there. Hey, elect Sharon Nassau. That's very good. There you 
good. Boy, gee whiz. I don't, Absolutely. You know, I don't understand. Nice color, I don't, great sign. I don't understand you, you're running, because I just saw your name on there. I didn't see anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you are a true champion. Don't send I mean, your phone at stage. So really, you should be in Hawaii kind of enjoying yourself before you have to go to work. <laughs> Well, I'll be doing exactly what I've been doing for the last couple of well, decades. Well, in all due respect, you're still working, too. I mean, that's yeah. one thing about you and I, King. We're in the same boat. Yep. We, we, we're constantly working. It's not, we did, we've been dealing with the issues for a number of years. You, I know you have. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not about just running for office and lobbying, no. if you will, or debating. It's about doing things. So I still know you're out there working oh, on, yeah. on the issues right now. You I am. Me? But having, having the time, if you will, to go out there and debate, sometimes that's a, you know. Uh -huh. but, but that's why we want to, want to have you on. We want you to be able to articulate the fact that you're running for office, and boy, I tell you, a Sharon vote is a is a vote for the people. Yes, and, it and, is. And, and Thank I'm not, you very much. And I'm much. not knocking the other opposition aspect or whatever, but I know you, and uh, I know that you're out there, and and I and I still welcome the person who's running, mm -hmm. who's running to come on the show if you like. Oh, and I know, I know you'd welcome. Come on the show. I think it'd be good for you her, her to her? talk to and, her and help her out. And that's one of the reasons why I'm interviewing you first. <laughs> to give her the opportunity to know what the issues right. are, yeah, yeah. so then so, she can, so she'll, so she'll know it. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. That's right. right. That's right. You yes, understand what I'm saying. Been. So let's let's talk about you. Talk about yourself. One, what what's, what what got you to the point where you, now this time around you got many issues that I know you've been working on. I but do. what particular issue did you feel got you really interested in filing the run for office? And I'm sure you got a solution to that issue. Why don't you share it with us? Go well, on, Sharon. I think the thing that has finally come to a head is not only do we not have district representation at all, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that she has been voting against a lot of Democratic principles, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, some of the main principles that both Democrats and Republicans can't support, but that she no longer allows constituents to come in and talk with her or other people. Mm. Absolutely, it is my way or the highway. Wow. Oh. I have been talking with so many community leaders, even people who have worked on her campaign, wow. who say they can't get a meeting with her. Has she, she run before? Yeah. Pardon? Has she run before? Has she, has she ran before? Yeah. <laughs> yes. She has run. Before. She is in office right now, as you know. Tina. Yes. Oh, wow. Really? So she starts out in moving into our district just barely in time to qualify to take Gary Hansen's uh, seat. Remember Gary? Gary is a solid guy. I, yeah, I loved I, Gary. Gary's Talked a solid to him guy. all yep, yep. the time for good years man, on good great man, issues. Good man. And he was at every function all the time. Exactly. And always had his home phone number and yep. stuff. You yep. know, all my flyers and things have my number on it. They want to call me yep. and talk to me. They well, can Gary's, reach me. Gary's straight up Well, guy. many people, including me, have tried to talk to her about campaign finance reform, transportation, housing, she just will not meet with constituents. Yeah. She also has been very dismissive to other Democrats. As you know, I, I know that. haunt the halls I, I down know. in Salem. No, and I, I know that. Well, I shouldn't say haunt. I, I beg your pardon. No, well, I, you're, you're, you're issue oriented. Oh, yeah. Now I'm down there you and just, I know You I'm, just happen to be a, re a Democrat. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh. And I know your Republican roots are just I, like, Well, <laughs> but we're about but issues. We have, yes, issues. Specific issues. Well, and that's just it. It's not about... Uh, a house divided will fall. Yes, yes. Our country is stumbling because yes. we aren't coming together exactly. on what we can. That's right. That's right. Yes, you as a Republican have yep. your far side. Yep. I have my side. Then you negotiate so exactly. you can go forward exactly. with something. You just don't keep That's fighting right. for That's the right. sake That's of right. fighting. That's right. That's right. And right now, uh, other leaders have said to me, come on in, Sharon, here, close the door. You know what? We, as Democrats, are yes. unable to affect the current person who is in leadership right, right. she's not listening to us we have things that can like campaign finance reform yeah yeah totally ready to come out of committee enough votes to be passed on the house floor wouldn't let it out of committee because she controls the committee chair people by being overly aggressive huh and so this has not worked at all so they are saying we're elected officials we have a right to have input in to what's going on here, mm -hmm. and we can't get any input. I mean, hmm. What does that say to wow, you? Yeah. So if people who are elected can't do it, if the constituents can't do it, and she makes decisions over the entire state, mm -hmm. and other people, right, private right, citizens can't right, come in, right. what does that leave? Oh, wow. wow. It leaves it, big it, money. It, it, it leads to $260 million down the hole. <laughs> yes, the CRC. The Columbia River she Crossing. Was, she was for that. 
and still is and is still pushing in and wow. has refused you gotta be kidding me. to meet with elected officials on the wow. Washington side wow. who are trying right now to do something about the congestion that takes a billion point three out of our economy every year. Boy, that she is just me. she's been saying it's my, you know she wants what she wants. Well you know what you know what in all due respect on that particular point I can still remember the last time I saw, 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 saw T Tiffany, not Tiffany, do you? Tiffany Couch? No, no, I'm thinking about uh, Tina. Yeah, Tina. Tina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so irritated about that old piece. But she was at the high noon meeting. Oh, yeah. And she spoke before us, if you will. And I asked a question and whatever. And then after she had lost, you know, it, 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 all of a sudden CRC went down the hole. It went down. It didn't go up, if you will. Then all of a sudden it was, well, gee, we're gonna work, I'm going to work with you. In fact, she said, Bruce, I'm going to even work with you. <laughs> just to make sure we get a bridge. And what you're telling me is that she's still in the same corner. She still wants only the exact same bridge. Uh, she has said it's too new. She still wants the consultant. So the, the two, because I thought it was only a hundred and some million. Now it's, it's 260 it's two, million. It's 210 million and 210 we're not million. sure. And, we're still and not she sure. is still pushing it. And there That's are insulting. freedom of information uh, uh, requests that have been put out because they are supposed to do a line item expenditure. Wow. When you receive federal funds, you are required to do line by line right. expenditure, turn it in every month so that they know that they have the correct amount of local spending funds and where you're getting your funds and what's happening. And then as a citizen, you're supposed to be able to pull this out and every month. Okay, it started in 205, 206, the C Columbia River crossing. Mm -hmm. All right. the way up to 213, yet we're still spending. Right. Oregon, as you know, got most of its money out exactly. of our maintenance and operations. That's right. That's Love right. those potholes. Now, every day. Every day. I want that I, money now when you get there. Yeah, they, they my, use for it my as streets a here in Portland. <laughs> Pardon? I, I, for my streets in Portland. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah, when you're in streets in Portland. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, we don't have an accounting, wow. and she won't push for that accounting. I think people should contact her and say, where are the monthly claim expenditure sheets required by federal law? Tell her. Hey. Tell her. Tell her now. Hello, Representative. I would like to see the monthly expenditure sheets from 205 to current because they're still spending money on the Columbia River crossing because that's required by law. You know, we all want to know where our money's been. Exactly. And you know what's interesting about, me? like you, like me, I'm in the same boat. You know, I'm, I'm running, but I can't get any answers. I can't knock on anybody's door who represents me. They're supposed to be the employees, mm -hmm. not the employers, right? We're the employers as the voter, right? The citizens. Exactly. But they won't give you any information. No, they won't. And, and here is the sad thing. Is, no transparency. Is they themselves haven't enough interest right. in our well-being exactly. to go and get those answers, exactly. not just because we're asking for right. them, but because they should have those answers yes. when they're running for office. Exactly, exactly. And they don't. They don't, they and, don't. And, and, and here's the thing, they dodge the tough ones. Yeah, they do, they do. Instead of going straight at it. I mean, for a long time, you and I yep, yep. have both been said, hey, yep, you're yep. going after windmills. Yep, and we yep. said, that's okay, yep. because you know what? Miracles do happen. Yes, they do. On a daily basis. Yes, and yes. when and when the Columbia River Crossing couldn't get funding and had that's all right. the issues that's that right. it had, that's right. we knew that's miracles right. happened. That's right. That's, that's why right. they're called miracles. It, exactly. It's exactly. I mean it was shoe leather. It's exactly. hard work. Exactly. It's community advocacy. Exactly. It's getting the citizens out there. I mean, you know us, renting oh, yeah. charter buses. Oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> you know I know. You know yeah, I know. taking lobbyists down oh. there uh, as citizens down there as as individual lobbyists and giving them a little thing that says, yes. you know, this is how you do it, and this is polite, right, and exactly, here's where you exactly. are. Who would you like to but speak to? guess what? To? Now we have the solution. We have a solution. You know why? Why? Because you filed and I filed. Yes, sir, and that <laughs> is the solution. That is the solution. You get that, Richard? That's right. People have right. a need That's for right. a change, That's right. and it's not just a change for change sake, right. but it's a change That's right. for a That's right. better. That's right. That's right. A better. It's about the issue. It's about, about the, issues. the issues. It's about being tolerant parties. enough to hear exactly. other people's views. It's exactly. about having a door that's open. It's about inclusion. Yes, exactly. Big time. Yeah, big time. Big time. Big time. And it's about focusing wow. on our district. Wow. Wow. North and Northeast, oh, Portland, sounds great. all the way oh, over to Cali, oh, yes. St. John's. Oh, yes. Great place yes, to be from. Yes, yes. We have a lot of yes, issues yes, here. Yes. And even small things yes. make a great big yes. difference in yes. our district. Yes. And we currently uh we just don't we have don't any have representation have whatsoever well, it's all about right. what she can do for her own exactly. stepping stone exactly. to go forward exactly. i mean family labeling our, our families 
uh, need to know what's in our food. Exactly. exactly. Most industrialized countries have it. You know the GMO. Yeah. Right. Uh, exactly. Oh yeah. And, and yet. She There's voted a big fight. against yes, it when yes. the Democrats were voting for it. She voted against it. Really? Oh, yeah. Gee. She also voted to slash teachers' pension and seniors' pensions. What? Most Democrats voted for it. That was a natural deal. For Thank you. Guys. It is for a true Democrat. Well, what, what, what happened? It is for somebody that. What happened? Ask her. Get her on the show. Ask her a few of the tough all questions. This time Richard, all all this time, Richard and I were trying to get to 65 or 70, and we get there, we don't get anything. Yeah. What, what's that all about? Yeah. Are you going to bring it back, buddy? Well, I, I think we do need to be looking at what people need to make. I think we need to. They, 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 I, I don't want to go too far. No, no, policy, no. That, that's all right. That's all right. No problem. I think we I need to, to, to say, hey, you know, why are some people getting so little that they yeah, can't yeah. even survive? Exactly. And some people who don't need it getting so much. Yes. And okay. maybe we should be looking at it as insurance policies exactly. are meant to be. If you need it, yes. the insurance is there. Yes. If you don't. But like I said, that all needs to be worked exactly. out in exactly. a good setting. Exactly. You know, some people who do get their pension say, you know, I was able to do this. this I mean, uh, there's exactly. Social Security and different things. Exactly. I was able to do all these things right. so I do have enough money. Exactly. And they don't even need the check that comes. Exactly. Exactly. And, and yet others are given such a small amount mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they can't live on it. Mm -hmm. uh, in some places, they have a specific amount that goes to everybody, mm -hmm. whether you're hoity-toity mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you put into it, this is what you're getting back. And I think uh, some people understand they are never going to get back what they got, what mm -hmm. they put into the Social mm -hmm. Security. Yeah, and if they've taken it's care of themselves, right. I think they're fine with that because it benefits all of us mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. of society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some people have it in their belief that America is great and living here is enough and they're happy to be able to contribute mm -hmm. to the betterment of society. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. those are the type of people that we need. And that's the type of leadership uh, statements to some people where you say, you know, do you really need that? And they yeah. say, well, no. Yeah. And then say, right. well, do you think that person over here does? And they right. say, yes. And then, then you say, okay, so what do you think about being benevolent? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, Sharon, is, this is refreshing, it really is. I mean, you know, like you said, we've been working together for quite some time. and. And the issue of party and mean nothing to us. It was always about the issues. <laughs> yes, you got me? we've had some we got, long we got, conversations. Excuse me, we got triggers in both sides. But not, you understand what I'm saying? You uh -huh. got the point. But the fact of it is, again, like I said, it's going to be refreshing. Uh, you know, and like I said, and we'll invite her. I mean, I'm inviting Tina right now. She said she was going to work with me. Oh, so, so then well, she could come on the show, mm -hmm. work with me, right? Right. Indirectly and share, if you will, her issues and the solution to those issues and respond to some of the concerns that you had because you are still the citizen. She's uh -huh. the elected official, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like saying, what has she done? Well, and why and has she done what she's done? Right? And when she comes and talks about Maybe her issues. Maybe she got a rationale. Maybe she got a rationale. I don't know. Well, I think it's important when she comes to talk about her issues. Her issues should be our district. Exactly. Focused on our exactly. district. Exactly. And not on what's happening here or there yes. and how to yes. use this as a stepping stone right. to right. go further. She needs to have issues yes. Yes. that have to do with housing, yeah, so. bringing good wage yes, paying yes, jobs. Yes. We have to have a decent, wow. decent, yes. decent jobs for yes. a decent life. Exactly. All work has exactly. value. Exactly. All work Very has values. So. All Very workers so. have rights. Very and then you have a whole list of just democratic values right. that we would like her to sign back on to. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you know, again, one of the other things that I'm, I'm really excited about the CRC, because, you know, we still have major congestion. In, oh, yeah, Columbia River Crossing. Oh, big, they're big not time, even doing anything. Big, big, big time. They're not doing anything, but it's going to be refreshing if we can get a person like you in that particular seat because I know it will carry over overnight. You just probably leapfrog and be governor. You never know. Well, yeah, <laughs> <not>. <laughs> well, you well, give me you. a couple of terms. No, no I don't know. You I'm know? not going to give you that. <laughs> no, you've already had terms. You, you got to well, get I something might, done. Yeah, two decades yeah, of working that's very what hard I'm on saying. stuff. That's yeah. what I'm saying, see. So you're right. You know, we've got to work together now. I mean, we, we've, we've had a beautiful city. We've had a beautiful state. And now we've got all this issue of homelessness and, and this well, and that, whatever. And, all. and so my point is that and we caught between two entities. I'm yeah. talking about Washington and California. 
we're right in the middle here, and we've been we've been living the life. You know, I still think about Tom McCall. Oh, I love. He's always making the point: visit, yeah. but don't stay. <laughs> <laughs> when they took down Tom's yeah. sign, they yeah. said, yeah. Vic "Welcome that. to Oregon. And you know, Vic enjoy did that. your visit." Yeah, Vic did that. It is it's unfortunate. Oh uh, uh, yeah, Vic. Yeah, Vic did that. that rascal. I like Vic. Uh, I mean, but I, I still wasn't able to, I interviewed him several times, but I never got to that point where I asked him, why did he do that? You know what I mean? Uh, but boy, yeah. that was a good piece because he kept everybody. Because people were still coming here. Yeah, Our borders oh, yeah. weren't and sealed. We, and we had I know a lot of Oreco didn't still have a problem yeah. with that issue. Well, and, 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 you know, what you had just said about we still have this total congestion, $1.3 yes. billion oh. dollars a year. Twenty-seventh uh, in size in the nation, but one of the top ten places for congestion. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, that's right. This has been studied, as you know, on and off since oh. 1979, oh. and continuously since 1999. I-5 corridor, I-5 train and transportation partnership, the 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 bi-state, and all the other things like that. And the truth is, there are regional studies. According to the Federal Highway Department. All we need is for the agencies, right. uh, the sponsoring councils, Metro, TriMet, RTC, and um, the two transit organizations to say, as an alternative, we don't want to take out a bridge that has 60 right, years right, of life right, left right. and have over a decade of construction right. on yeah, I-5 right, with right. no way around right, it. Right. We can, a, a and then they just bit. say, do this. And, and all of the data is regional and all exactly. of it fits. Yep. And as that our local preferred alternative, it's already been adopted in the Oregon Regional Transportation Plan, and it's already in the the Freight Master Plan, right. and all these other right. things. It, it it they can just go forward just by doing that Jeez. and start receiving funding. Exactly. And mind you, we are still in line for appropriation, federal appropriations wow. for something because it's a highway of significance. It goes from Canada to Mexico. It affects the economy of of 17 states wow. our congestion does well before you before you go beyond this point but we got about two minutes left yes, and I want to make sure we minutes. we get a good close here on this peace aspect of it if I were to ask you what do you feel maybe see one point that the rationale for this not happening with on the other side I mean money Money. Follow, money. follow the money. Seems to be the follow, follow, follow the, the money. money. When you lower Who's that the head bridge, consultant taking that? away good who, family who jobs. Is, who was dealing out those dollars? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? When, when, when you have, have a group called the Columbia River Crossing LLC. Yes, right. That purchased most things, as yes. you know, on your island. Yes. Most of the streets that had those big potholes yes. on, on the island yes. are privately owned. Yes, that's right. They got a big sign up, privately owned, because they were expecting to get this great big gravy that's right, train. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, we were going to lose uh, more jobs than it created. Wow. It was going to lower the bridge, meaning that the Kaiser shipyards and everything, and they had the big turbine. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. And yep. and then it was going to send more congestion into our neighborhoods. Right. And. All of a sudden, it was going to be a private partnership yep, where yep, businesses yep, were going yep. to make all this money. Well, it took money out of a yep. lot of people's well, hands, hey, buddy, I know. Uh, we're going to go on again. I want you back on here again. But I want to let you folks, I want you to see who, I want, I want you to understand who I was working with for quite some time. And we did yeah. the job right here. Yeah. And we stopped it. We need this bridge. Yeah. We need we this need, extra bridge. Well, we, we need, need a bridge. better alternative. Yeah, need, and yeah, I have been promoting we got, we got. a better alternative. So what's the last thing you'll say before you get out and knock on those doors? You better t say what she's Real running quick, for right. again. And what you're running for. Talk I'm about I'm running for House District 44 as state rep in District 44. You're running against Tina Kotek. That's going to really resonate. Ah, see, yeah, yeah. They know her. you're an old salesman. Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to be saying the other person. Oh, what do you mean? Now. I can. Yeah. No, 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 yes, you can. <laughs> all, all, this is your show. You can hey, do right, what you can do, Bruce. Vote for her. Thank you. Hey, look. I would really appreciate your vote. And I have worked really hard in this yep. district for a long time, at least two decades, as a okay. community advocate doing environmental justice, ranging from housing, transportation, okay. education, We're done. you yeah, name it, We're the done. economy. We gotta and go. I Boy, will she's good. Really work we gotta go, folks. We'll have her on. She's good. She's that. good. Look at her. See you next time around, folks. She'll <laughs> be back. So Take care. Tina, I'll see you next week. Bye.